Hi everybody. Um, as you know, we're stuck inside, um, and of course I'm always cooking. I'm always telling you I'm always cooking, and then of course you're always seeing me at school, I'm always cooking. Um, so I thought, since I'm gonna make something today in honor of St. Patrick's Day, that I would show you what I was making. Um, this is pretty quick and simple. Um, it is in the Quick Breads family. Those of you that have had baking and pastry one, you'll know that it's called a quick bread because we don't use yeast. Yeast taking so much longer to ferment, it can take many hours to have a bread as a final product. But with baking soda, which is what we're using today, uh, it's gonna be relatively quick. All right, I've already mise en place all our ingredients out, so I wanna start by mixing together our dry ingredients. I need a large bowl for that. To that, I'm gonna add whole wheat flour, and I will um, include the link to the recipe, which comes from Food 52. This is yogurt bread with molasses. I'll include that link. Um, I made a half a yield because it makes quite a substantial loaf of bread. So I have my whole wheat flour, a little bit of cornmeal, um, some kosher salt. It's specifically asked for kosher salt. And remember that in a recipe, if it doesn't specifically ask you for the coarse kosher salt, that you should use the regular table grind uh, iodized salt. But in this case, it's asked for this. And also some baking soda. This is going to be the chemical leavener that's in it. Remember that if you're using baking soda, you're not going to be able to take your time. You're going to have to really move, which makes having our mise en place together all the more important. So I'm going to add that. Just use a wire whisk to mix all the ingredients together. If you'd like, you could actually sift it, but I find that you get all the lumps and include it together um, pretty quickly with the wire whisk. All right, I'm going to set that aside for a moment, and now I need to mix together my liquid ingredients. So that's going to be Greek yogurt. And I let this Greek yogurt sit out for a little while. I find that ingredients in most cases at room temperature do better. Um, this recipe does not have to have cold butter in it. In fact, it has no butter in it whatsoever. So having the ingredients up to room temperature help to quicken the baking process. Right, bear with me. I want to get every last little bit out of the container. Um, there's not that much in there, so this is going to be all the liquid we have to moisten our dry ingredients. All right, and then to this I'm going to add dark molasses. I don't know if you can see it or not. The container is somewhat greasy and I actually sprayed it with a little bit of pan release so that it would make it easier for me to get the molasses out of the container. Right. And I just want to mix these two together. This is a fairly lean bread because it doesn't have any fat in it, aside from a little bit of fat in the yogurt, and it doesn't have any eggs in it. And I'm gonna switch over to the wire whisk at this point because I feel like I still have a few lumps in my yogurt. All right, that's much better. And look at that gorgeous color that you get from that. All right, so I want to mix the liquid in with my dry, and I'm gonna do that in about two to three stages. So I'm gonna put in a little dollop in there, and then circling around and folding it. All right, you wanna be sure to get all the flour at the bottom. I'm gonna add a little bit more at this point. So that's my second stage. And then finally, I'm gonna add the last of it all together, and I'm, I'm certain to get all of the scrapings out of the bowl. Remember, there's no reason to waste any of that, and this recipe's been formulated to use specific amounts of ingredients, so we made to make sure to get everything out. All right, I'm gonna mix it the rest of the way together, and if at some point you feel like you wanna use your hands, you certainly can. All right, just shy of it all coming completely together at this point, I'm gonna add some dried cranberries. I like this recipe because it has dried cranberries in it. I really don't like raisins. I know it's a, it's a terrible thing to say you're a baker and you don't like raisins, uh, but I find dry cranberries work pretty much um, as an alternative in just about any recipe. In fact, these are fantastic in oatmeal raisin cookies or oatmeal cranberry cookies. So bringing it together, 
Now, this isn't going to look like your typical bread that you get at the grocery store. This is more rustic. It's a little bit on the drier side, but it is an Irish soda style bread, so it's going to be perfect tonight served with our corned beef and cabbage dinner. All right, I've just about got it there. At this point, I'm going to kind of move to using my hands for it. Now, the recipe will tell you to use a regular baking pan, but I love to use our pizza stone when I'm baking breads because I just think it comes out just that much nicer. So to prepare it, I've just put down a little bit of all-purpose flour so that it's not going to stick. And I have my oven preheated to 325 degrees. I'm just trying to get the last remnants of what's in the bowl. Oops, one got away. All right, and don't over mix it because if you do, it's going to be tough. You really just need to bring it together. All right, at this point, you can either make it a round loaf or you can make it an oblong loaf. I think I'm going to go with a round loaf. I'm just going to shape it round. Again, it's very rustic. And placing it down, all right? And I want to score it a little bit so that it looks super pretty um, when it's done baking. Now, I have this fancy one here. It's French. It's called a lame. It's basically like a razor blade. Most people don't have that in your kitchen. And you don't really have to use that kind of thing. Just a regular serrated knife will be fine. Don't cut too far through, but just give it a few slices just to make it look pretty when it's done. All right. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the oven and it's gonna bake till it's golden brown and the internal temperature will be about 200 degrees. Alrighty, um, so with the magic of video, we've turned it off. I'm turning it back on now that the um, molasses bread with yogurt is ready. Here's the final product. Again, remember, it's not like a typical loaf of Wonder Bread. It's a very rustic style of bread. Um, in fact, it's very biscuity almost in texture. And when we cut it, we wanna make sure that it's completely cool to let any of that uh, residual moisture evaporate so that it'll hold together a little bit because it is a crumblier bread. It's not gonna hold together and make slices like for a sandwich. We'll get some kind of a slice out of it that we can butter to have as an accompaniment with our St. Patrick's Day meal, but it's going to be a little bit different. Think of it again as more of like a biscuit and less of a sliced sandwich bread. All right, guys, well, I'm going to post this to you. Um, be sure to make comments and let me know if there's anything special you want to see during the break. Um, I can't make any promises because I don't know what they'll have at the grocery store if I can get out to the grocery store, um, but I'll keep trying to post something. I have a lot of baking needs in the house and we'll see where we go from here. So thanks for joining me.